Hi everyone, happy Tuesday. Welcome to So What? I hope you're having a great day. Um, I, like many of you, I'm sure, am frozen. <laughs> okay, I have my electric blanket and um, yeah, it's been chilly, right? Um, someone sent this to me today anonymously and I had to share it with you. Let me get my microphone closer um, because it's exactly how we are all feeling and dealing right now. <laughs> so how many of out how many of you out there could pretty much do this right now? Make a snowing machine. Oh, I know, I know, I couldn't resist. But I mean, seriously, I feel like I could build this um, in my studio right now. Uh, so I had to share that with you. I cannot take credit for this picture. Um, I actually have no idea where it came from. It, Like I said, it was sent to me anonymously, um, but I couldn't resist sharing it because Man, we are just in in the thick of it right now um, for most of the, or a lot of the country, I should say. <laughs> so, super cute. Um, all right, so before we get started with today's sort of technique and project overview that I'm going to share with you, I wanted to let you all know that we started a new sale today. So, in keeping with our National Embroidery Month theme. Uh, today, we started our Cut and Petites and Stick and Stitch sale. So really great prices on all the sulky 12-weight Cotton Petites, the solids and the blendable varieties. Uh, these are the threads I'm always talking about for hand embroidery. Now, you can also use these threads for big stitch quilting, for sashiko work, for decorative top stitching, as long as you have a large enough needle to accommodate the thickness of the thread. So this thread has a lot of great uses, but I talk about it mostly for handwork, cross stitch, machine embroidery. Also, you can get 30% off of the petite slim lines. So if you want to grab the entire line, you can do so rather easily and get a nice uh, price, a good deal on getting it in a slimline container, which makes it, um, you know, which gives you a great organizational um, option. Okay, also stick and stitch, one of my favorite stabilizers. It is used for uh, design transfers as well as stabilization. So you can print directly on it by running the sheets through your printer, print whatever design you like. You can also just draw on it if you don't want to run it through a printer and uh, it'll work that way as well. And then you will cut out your motif uh, slightly beyond the design perimeter and apply it directly to the fabric right side. Then sew through all layers and it just washes away magically when your embroidery is complete. So this is kind of our hand embroidery or handwork sale, if you will. So grab those up uh, while you can get them at this great, great price. Okay, so I'm not actually going to talk about petites today. Well, I just did. But the project that I'm focusing on um, to share with you all today um, does not use the petites thread, but you certainly could do a hand embroidery design in the center of this mini quilt I'm going to show you instead of doing machine embroidery. So you always, always have that option. And, you know, Wherever we put a, an embroidery design, take liberties, make it your own. Choose a different design that you love. Choose a design that's been in your uh, computer on your hard drive forever and you just didn't know what to do with it. Um, or swap out a handwork design. A lot of the times you can get a design color chart that comes with a machine embroidery design and actually use that as a handwork template. 
So if you purchase the machine embroidery design, print out the first page or the page with the artwork from the color sequence chart, print that right onto your stick and stitch and you've got a hand embroidery design. So there are lots of things you can do with that template. It usually comes in real size so that you can use it to plot out where your design is going to go on your finished project. So just keep that in mind that you can use those multiple ways. Okay, so speaking of that, this is our beautiful project I'll be talking about today. You are my lucky charm. We're calling this the Lucky Charm Mini Quilt. And it is going to get you into the mood of St. Patrick's Day decorating and all things spring and get us out of this polar vortex and hopefully on to some changing weather patterns and some rain and some flowers and all good things to come. So dive into your fabric stash, come out with a bunch of green print fabrics and get ready to rock and roll on this. Now, it is a mini quilt. It's very small. Um, I wish I would have written down the dimensions, but it's right on our download page, which is in the description of today's post. Let me see if I can pull it up rather easily. I have 500 um, browser windows open on my computer right now, so hopefully I find the right one, because um, I'm sure a lot of you are going to ask me now that I've said how uh, small it is. How small is it? Am I right? Okay, let's see if I can get back there really quickly to tell you. Okay, finish size is 16 and a half inches square. Okay, so that's about the size we're dealing with here. Now, as with everything, as I was just saying, customize it to your liking. If you want to make it a little bit larger, if you want to make this center square and add panels onto it to make a really pretty table runner, by all means, that would be fantastic. If you want to make this into a larger quilt, do some math. You can enlarge it your own self. It's fairly easy to construct, and it's great for those of you who have wanted to try quilting, but you don't really want to commit to a super large quilt design, or you want to start out small in scale and in you know learning curve. This is a great project for you. Plus, you can do machine embroidery or handwork, like I mentioned. You can do hand quilting or machine quilting. You can choose the quilting that you desire to do. You don't have to send this off to a long armor who has a big machine to accommodate a king size quilt. So it's really something that you can do from soup to nuts, the whole thing. And you know, you can really complete it in the matter of hours, honestly, um, depending on the design that you choose and how long that that takes to stitch out. So I'm going to go over the basic how to's for how to create this little mini quilt. It was designed by an awesome designer. Her name is Melanie Call. Um, her blog is called A Bit of Scrap Stuff, and she has done some projects with Sulky in the past. She just has a really fantastic design sensibility, and I love working with her. She just, not only does she produce great projects, but her instructions are very easy to follow. So that really, really helps things out. Um, as you can see, this block is comprised of basically two pieced blocks. You have your center block, which is not pieced at all. That's where you will do your embellishment, and then, you have, dun, 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 oops, these are our fabrics, I'm getting ahead of myself. Then you have a series of half square triangles. A half square triangle is just that, a square that is cut in half diagonally uh, and then pieced with another half square triangle uh, to create sort of this windmill pattern. Um, it's a very popular quilt block and it's a very basic block to learn because it's a building block you can use to create other large uh, quilt patterns or quilt blocks. Um, there are a number of different methods or ways to create half square triangles. 
uh, so that you don't have to pre-cut them. You can basically create or stitch out, excuse me, you can cut two squares, place them right sides facing, draw a diagonal line from corner to corner, and then stitch on either side of that line to account for your seam allowance, then slice right down your original marked line and you'll have two half square triangle blocks when you are finished. So that's kind of what I love about quilting is there are so many ways to streamline the process and to make really accurate blocks without having to think about it so much. And materials really play a great, great part in all of that accuracy. Um, having a really great ruler, having some different sizes of clear rulers. Um, one of my favorite clear rulers is a one inch by six inch. And I love it for small blocks. I love it for gauging seam allowance. Of course, I can't find it right next to me, <laughs> but I will show it to you all. And, um, you know, having larger rulers when you are doing uh, quilt bindings and just larger pieces in general. So the other block essentially you're creating is really just a strip pieced block. These are sort of the border pieces that get pieced to those corner half square triangle blocks. So you can see it comes together very easily and you only need four sets of these blocks to border your center embroidered block. Okay, so let's get back to one of the main materials for this and that is our embroidery thread. Now, for those of you asking, where is the design? The embroidery design is from OESD. I linked to it in the description of the post today. OESD has a sister site called Scissor Tail Stitches and it has really cute designs. And uh, we kind of looked for a design that didn't have a lot of fill stitches, that had a lot of outline or, you know, running stitch kind of qualities to it because we wanted to feature this sulky poly sparkle thread. Now, I'm sorry to confuse all of you, this was formerly known as Sulky Polystar. You can see it still says that on the label. Polystar and Polysparkle are one and the same. We are transitioning to calling this thread Polysparkle. So if you do hear me refer to it as Polysparkle, it is because I am also trying to train myself. <laughs> Sometimes that happens after a launch and uh, we, we're here for it. Polysparkle, it's a beautiful thing. So this six pack is called the Luck of the Irish Poly Sparkle or Poly Star six pack. And we bundled these together so that you would have all the greens and golds that you would want for St. Patrick's Day decor, St. Patrick's Day gifts, and really just greenery bringing you into those spring months. So this was curated so that you could get all six and get a deal on those thread spools rather than buying them all individually. So you can grab up that six pack. The design that's featured um, has, I believe one extra thread in it or one extra color stop in it. You can choose just one of these green colors or you can grab up an extra one. It's completely up to you to customize that featured design. But this six pack works great for the majority of the featured machine embroidery design. Normally, I'm always telling you when you're looking out for designs to embroider with thicker thread, right? This is a 30 weight thread. Normally, we would embroider with a 40 weight polyester, polydeco, or sulky rayon thread because digitizers who are designing designs, say that three times fast, are for the most part, digitizing them for 40 weight thread. Why does this matter? Because a thinner thread is going to take longer or more stitches to fill an area than a thicker or 30 weight thread would. So if you substitute a 30 weight thread 
for a 40 weight design or design that's digitized for 40 weight, you might find that you're experiencing thread breakage or the thread is building up a little bit or the thread is kind of stitching over itself, creating kind of a bumpy look to it. That's because your thread is too thick for the chosen design. So you really need to be mindful of the designs that you're choosing. Um, when you are looking at sites for uh, embroidery designs, read the description. If the description does not say what thread weight the design is digitized for, sometimes you can look at the color chart prior to purchasing the design and it will be listed in the color chart. Or you can just give a quick shout out to that company and say, hey, would this be suitable for 30 weight thread or was it digitized for 40 weight? Now, like I said, the design that's featured in this uh, mini quilt was digitized for 40 weight thread, but it's such an open, airy outline design. I'll show it to you again here that it works with 30 weight. So if you are unsure if your thread's going to work with the design, reach out to that company or to that digitizer and just ask the question, they will get back to you. Or you can always perform a test stitch out. Just isolate one of the portions of this design, probably the portion that has the most fill in it. So maybe that three leaf clover um, that's in the, the word you and test stitch that out on a piece of scrap fabric. If it stitches out beautifully with your 30 weight thread and your 60 weight sulky bobbin thread, then you're good to go. If it doesn't, stitch out one of the airier portions of the design, like the letter, the word charm or uh, the letter L. And maybe it will work for that because it has less fill to it. And then you can substitute your poly sparkle for those portions of the design and use a traditional 40 weight rayon or 40 weight poly deco for the portions of the design that have a heavier stitch count. Okay, so that's how you can kind of get away with using a specialty thread or a heavier weight thread in an embroidery design that was digitized for 40 weight thread. Okay, it's also important to adjust your needle size. Okay. For this particular project, Melanie chose a size 9014 titanium needle. Now a titanium needle is extra super duper strong. Um, it works great for a thread with metallic flex running through it. Um, it doesn't produce as much crazy uh, friction or heat as a traditional needle would during high speed embroidery stitch outs which can give you problems when you're working with metallic threads sometimes. Um, I would say a 9014 either embroidery needle, titanium needle, or top stitch needle for this thread, depending on what you're doing. So what Melanie recommends, and she did some tests, is the 9014 titanium for this one. You can see she threw in that extra spool of Sulky Poly Sparkle in addition to the Luck of the Irish six pack, and then a spool of Sulky Bobbin Thread, as well as a spool of Black Sulky Rayon Thread, which she added to the design for some of the outline stitches um, to make the lettering really pop. Also pictured here, you can see that she used Sulky Stiffy for the machine embroidery. Sulky Stiffy is a a little bit heavier weight uh, tearaway stabilizer than the standard sort of run of the mill sulky tear easy. Tear easy I would use for pretty lightweight fabrics and it's kind of a it's kind of a go-to stabilizer for me when I want a tearaway. Um, but Melanie wanted a little bit more coverage on that center panel and she wanted to be sure that with that extra large needle that was needed for the thicker thread, that she wasn't going to create larger needle holes in that lighter weight quilting cotton. So she went with a heavier weight stabilizer to support or 
essentially add thread count to that quilter's weight cotton that was in the center. So stiffy I like to also use when embroidering canvas, um, some denims, um, pretty much any sort of heavier weight fabric. But if you think that you might need two layers of Tear Easy, maybe just go with one layer of Sulky Stiffy. And that will kind of give you the same coverage that you think that you might need with the, um, with the Tear Easy. So hopefully that makes sense. All right, so like I said, dive into your stash, find those cute green print fabrics. You wanna keep your center panel to a solid or a print fabric with a small print, a polka dot, or you know, a blender kind of a solid, uh, so that that embroidery can really pop. So keep that in mind as well. All right, so hooping. There you can see that center fabric that Melanie chose. It just has a really nice soft polka dot um, in sort of a gold color. So it really goes with that poly sparkle metallic feel. Um, and this is a relatively large uh, stitch out or large design. Um, if I got a little closer, I might be able to read her hoop markings, but all that information is in the free project post that I linked to in the description of the live post today. So be sure if you're not seeing that, click see more and the entire description will pop up for you and you can see all the links to everything that I'm talking about today. You'll be able to navigate right on over and grab this cute design and get all the specs for it and all that good stuff. So you'll hoop your fabric with some of that sulky stiffy and embroider your design. And again, I like to use the sulky bobbin thread um, especially with a heavier weight thread because it really gives you that balanced stitch. You want a little bit of your top thread to be showing on the underside of your embroidery. I know that seems counterintuitive because when you are doing standard sewing or quilting or really sewing of any other kind, a balanced stitch means that you can't see the bobbin thread on the top and you can't see the bobbin thread on the bottom. Well, for machine embroidery, you actually want that upper thread to slightly pull towards the wrong side. And that way you know you're getting a beautiful balanced stitch. All right, so you've got your center. Um, and then the photo I accidentally showed you earlier, there you have your prepared center embroidery block. And then you can begin to build your border blocks that go around it. So play around with those fabrics that you find, um, you know, match them, bring in that center uh, color for your little half square triangle pinwheels. Just, you know, have fun with it. And again, just to review, that is our corner block. So you're gonna create four half square triangles each and then piece them together for that sort of windmill pattern and then your other border blocks. All right, then you get to have fun with the quilting. So you will create your mini quilt top and then create your quilt sandwich. So your quilt sandwich is your quilt top, your layer of batting, and then your backing fabric. And I love to use Sulky KK2000 which is our temporary spray adhesive. It is air, solu air soluble. So it dissipates in the air after about 24 to 48 hours. And it's great for a mini quilt. You don't have to do any pin basting because you can spray your layers, smooth it out, start quilting, and you will be done with the quilting before it ever dissipates. And then you can trim up your block and bind it in the way that you like. So you can use a pre-made binding, but I love, especially with a, with a, um, a quilt that you know, you've know you added your quilting stitches to, you have put all this embroidery on, let's use one of those fabric prints and make a really pretty nice binding. And then you can make an extra narrow binding. So 
When I've got a mini quilt, I like to use a really narrow binding. When I have a huge quilt, I use a wider binding. So it's really, you know, up to your preference. Okay, let's answer some questions here. What size is the block? So it's 16 and a half inches square, roughly, uh, depending on the width of your, of your chosen binding at the end. Um, or I guess, yeah, that's the block size. There you go. Okay. If you have any questions, please put them in the chat. I will try to answer everything um, in a couple of different Q&A blocks here during the live. So, okay. Lots of people loving the design. It's so cute. It's rather simple, but impactful. I love a project like that where you know, you can just have fun making it. You don't have to worry too much about being super precise with all of these different block measurements and trimming everything up. And, you know, you've really only got eight blocks to create that go around that center block. So it's, you know, you could finish this in an afternoon's time, which is so great. Karen is asking, is the scissor tail design free? Or only the project. So it's only the pattern, the, the project for the block design. Um, that machine embroidery design, like I said, is an OESD design, uh, not affiliated with Sulky. So it's, it's rather inexpensive though, so you could grab that and add it to your design library. Okay. Also, um, I wanted to mention the Luck of the Irish six pack, which is shown here in this image, these six spools of really great green and gold sparkly polyester threads. Um, that is today's giveaway for one lucky viewer today. If you are commenting, liking, um, otherwise engaging with the post today, you are automatically eligible to be the winner of the Luck of the Irish Poly Sparkle six pack. So uh, keep those questions coming. Give me the thumbs up. Give me the hearts. Um, there are a few angry emojis. That's okay. I get it. Um, so <laughs> all of you engaging with the post are eligible for that great, great freebie. It is $24.99 retail, so it's a great prize today for one lucky winner. All right, let me make sure I'm getting to most of the questions here. Okay, sorry, they're coming in super fast. I'm trying to keep up. So back to the quilting here. Now, I did mention the 12-weight cotton petites are great for big stitch quilting, for hand quilting, for quilting where you really want to make um, an impact. You really want that thread to be seen. Um, for this, Melanie likes to quilt with sulky 30 weight cotton thread. She just prefers that thread. So she used a blendable 30 weight cotton thread for the quilting. And you can see she did like a meandering stitch, um, just free motion style. So you would drop your feed dogs on your machine and you are then in control for how fast and what direction you are moving your quilt sandwich. And it does take a little bit of practice, but a small scale project like this is great for practicing new techniques like free motion. And if you've never tried the Sulky Blendables thread, it's very unique. Um, I've got some right here. The blendables thread is unlike a traditional variegated thread because it is randomly dyed every two and a half to five inches across the thread length. So you are not going to get the same color pattern if you decide to do straight line quilting or if you do meandering lines that are equidistant, that type of thing. The color is not going to uh, be exactly the same across the length. So it's really, really great for quilting in that regard. So this is one of the 30 weight blendables varieties and dyed completely randomly 
every two and a half to five inches. You can see this yellow is a little bit um, shorter than this amount of yellow across the same length of thread. So it's really, really neat and unique like that. So you can get the 12 weights on sale right now, the 12 weight blendables, or you can go with the 30 weight and do the machine quilting like Melanie does. It's completely up to you. But I happen to love the blendables as well. I think the one that she used is called Green Apple. Um, it is in the description of today's post as well, so you can head on over and get that exact thread if that's what you would like for your project. Okay. Let's see if I can get to some more questions. Cheryl is saying she purchased the silver and gold package. It is beautiful. Yeah, we have a lot of Poly Sparkle six packs that are available. Um, and we have some 12 packs as well. We did an ultimate Valentine Poly Sparkle pack and that had 12 pinks and purples and reds and all those Valentine-y colors. Um, we also have a spring six pack and I that's a great segue because our spring six pack I thought would be great for our Simply Applique spring wall hanging. This is kind of another mini quilt, if you will. This one comes with the pattern. It comes with laser cut appliques. It comes with the backing, the binding. There's even enough fabric for a sleeve if you want to create a hanging sleeve for the back of it. And it comes with six spools of sulky thread. Now the thread that this comes with, you get five spools of sulky rayon and a spool of sulky metallic. But I just thought it would look so great with the six pack of Poly Sparkle uh, thread in the, the spring bundle. So if you go ahead and grab up this bundle, it's called Simply Applique Spring, and it's the light bundle, meaning uh, you get uh, six spools of thread, like I said. You can grab up that spring uh, assortment of Poly Sparkle, and it would be so, so pretty with this. Um, I'll try to make this a little bit bigger. Some of you are saying you can't really see it. So it's a little teapot with a heart on it and some really great springy type flowers. And like I said, all of these pieces are laser cut. So you can get right to the fusing. They also have fusible web already attached to them. So all you have to do is remove the paper backing on each applique piece, follow your pattern template to place each piece onto the backing fabric, give it a good fuse, and then you can start sewing. So the rayon that's included is great for machine applique. You would uh, switch out your thread color based on the applique color that you are working on at that particular time. And it just gives it a nice sheen. Um, and you can really play with the decorative stitches that are built into your sewing machine. We never get to use those, right? I mean, maybe I guess we get to use them a fair amount, but there are so many stitches. I'm looking at my machine right now, and there are so many stitches I've never even selected or used. So the great uh, sort of recommendation for starting a Simply Applique project, which we've got spring, summer, winter, and fall you can choose from, or you can get all four in a mega kit and have a really pretty kind of four seasons quilt if you wanna go that route. But what's really great is it's suggested to, to uh, create a stitch sampler before you begin. And by that, I mean, you would create your quilt sandwich, meaning you have a top fabric, your batting, and then a backing fabric, and try out all of your decorative stitches on your machine. Mark which ones they are, whether they have a name or a number, however they are referred to, on your machine screen and stitch out a line of them. Then play with the width, play with the length, stitch it out again. Mark little notes onto your fabric saying what you did, what adjustments you made, and keep moving through your stitch library. When you're done, you can bind this piece 
hang it in your sewing room and you always have a reference for, hey, what stitch do I wanna use here? Oh, I'll do that one, it's long enough, or look what happens to the star when I make it really wide. That would be perfect for the center of this flower, that type of thing. So you're creating a reference for yourself and also practicing and getting a feel for how these decorative stitches sew out. Some of them have lots of movement and it gets to be kind of shocking when you're going through your project and all of a sudden, you know, the needle is switching way over to the left or that type of thing. So you need to be mindful of the presser foot that you're using. If you have an open toe applique foot, that's probably the best thing to use when you're testing out decorative stitches, especially when you're playing with width, right? Because you wanna make sure that your needle has enough room to go back and forth and to move freely. Sometimes you can use a free motion foot as well. Um, so there are some different options. And anyways, I just thought this would be another great project to bring up since we're talking about mini quilts um, and talking about adding that poly sparkle to things and really having fun with it. I thought that this was just another great option. All right, let me make sure I'm addressing all the questions. And Rose is saying she loves the mini quilt and you could continue to frame it and make it larger. That's exactly right. You can add wider borders. You can continue to add different blocks that you like and you could create this block several different times with a different um, embroidery design in the center. Maybe you've got a large scale four leaf clover or a, a pot of gold or a leprechaun. Um, you could add these as focal points in a larger quilt design. So it's really versatile. You can, like I said, create a table runner, create placemats, um, create a larger quilt like you're suggesting. So that's a great idea. Okay, let's make sure we've got most of, oh, Barbara says, would also make a nice pillow. Exactly. I love that you all, you know, can take liberty uh, with these designs and really personalize them and make them, make them your own. This is another great suggestion. Use leftover green fabrics from your Christmas stash. Exactly. Especially, you know, when you're creating half square triangles and they end up being this small, you could even use a holly print or a evergreen tree print. And once you cut it this small, you can't really tell that that's a Christmas fabric. It definitely goes with St. Patrick's and, you know, it just gives you that pop of green that you need. So keep that in mind. March table topper. Exactly. Exactly. So um, someone just said it looks so fun and fast, and those are my kind of projects, you know, especially as we're getting ready for, you know, decorating for another holiday. It seems like we've had holiday, holiday, Valentine's, St. Patrick's Day, and then Easter's coming up. Um, so I like to always bring something new to the party um, while I bring out my old tried and true kind of favorite decorations as well. So I like adding a little something and especially something that's about 16 inches square. I can do that, you know? That gives me the confidence that I can actually finish that in a weekend or on a Saturday um, for in a few hours. So that's really nice. Okay. Carol is loving the embroidery. I love it too. You know, a I do get a lot of questions about people saying, can I add machine embroidery to quilts? How do I add machine embroidery to quilts? You know, there are so many different ways. Not only can you add designs like we're doing here, but you can also use your embroidery machine to do the actual quilting. Um, some embroidery machines come with built-in quilting designs where you would size your block to the hoop size that uh, that quilting design is and 
hoop up your block, quilt it through all layers on your embroidery machine. It's a beautiful thing. You can do end-to-end -end quilting designs, designs by Juju. Uh, we just did a webinar with her last week, and she talks about using end-to-end -end quilting designs. She has a number of brand new ones uh, that she just put on her site, and so that's another great technique to get a lot of use out of your embroidery machine. And you know what? Put it to work. Let it do the most of the work for you. <laughs> I'm all for it. Um, you know, you can't beat the accuracy of the machine doing it. Um, although there are definitely times where I love to feel the fabric under my fingers. I like that meditative free motion work and I like to do hand quilting too. Um, it just really depends on the time that I have and you know, what the end result is going to be used for. So, you know, something that I'm going to wash a lot or that's going to get a lot, a lot of wear and tear to it. I'm have no problem letting my machine embroider, letting my embroidery machine do most of that work for me. Okay. What size needle should I use with the 30 weight thread? So you definitely want a size 9014 needle. The type of needle that you choose is going to depend on the technique and or the fabric that you're using. So for this project, Melanie used a 9014 titanium needle. I was going to find a picture of it here. And the titanium needle, um, there we go is a very strong needle that holds up to a lot of friction that is produced and heat that could be produced by high speed machine embroidery. So when you're working with a thread that has metallic properties like the poly sparkle, it's a polyester thread and it sews like a polyester thread. It's actually my favorite metallic type of thread to sew or to use for my embroideries because, um, it really sews out like a polyester thread. So the metallic flex running through it don't really affect your stitch out, um, your stitch out quality or your, your um, the adjustments that you normally need for metallic thread with your embroidery machine. Now, some machines are still going to need those adjustments. Um, you wanna make sure that when the thread is winding off the spool, that it's flowing horizontally toward the needle. If it's twisting off of the spool like this, it's going to create all this tension as it heads to the needle. And after a while, it's going to have no choice but to break and snap on you. This does not have anything to do with the quality of the thread. This has to do with the undue tension that is happening because the thread is spinning around on itself. And when you are sewing at a super duper high speed, sometimes it's hard to even tell that that's happening, but it's twisting, twisting, twisting on its way to the needle. And then when you go to do your design, especially if it's a lot of fill stitches, your thread's going to snap. So keep those things in mind. Slow down your machine. Slow it down by at least half. Even with the poly sparkle, you could slow your machine down. Um, that's just going to reduce the amount of twists that your thread is going to maybe um, be that your thread might do. <laughs> okay, so hopefully I'm, I'm explaining that well. Um, but yes, size 9014 for 30 weight thread. For 40 weight thread, I like 8012 needles. And then for 50 weight thread, I like 70 11s. So you can kind of see how the higher the thread number, the smaller the needle. The smaller the thread number, the higher the needle. So if you're sewing with that 12 weight cotton petites that are on sale right now, you will want to use a 116 needle. You need the needle eye to be large enough to accommodate the thickness of thread. So I'm always showing this tip, um, but for those of you who missed it, I'm going to show it again, provided that I can find a sewing machine needle. <laughs> you would think I would have all of this stuff. 
at hand, and generally I do. For all of you who have seen this before, I apologize that I'm showing it again, but it's just, I just, it's a great example of how to decipher what needle uh, size is going to work with your thread. So I'm going to use a strand of these, this 30 weight blendables, and I have an 8012 top stitch needle. And notice it is not on my machine yet. So why fight with trying to thread your machine with a new needle and all this while it's on there? Take it off, thread the needle. Now the 30 weight struggles just a little bit to even be threaded. So that tells me right away, this needle is probably not large enough for this thread weight. Once I have it threaded, I'm going to take and try to move my needle across the thread length. Do you see how it's kind of struggling a little bit? It does not move very swiftly. I have to kind of shake it to get it to move down there. That is telling you that the thread is too thick for the needle eye. Now, similarly, if it just slides across the thread, it might be too large of a needle for the thread. You want it to be to glide effortlessly, but not too slowly or too quickly. And if you practice this with different thread weights and different needle sizes, you will get the hang of what's going to work for your chosen materials. So I highly suggest grabbing up assortment packs of needles. We have a number of them at sulky.com. We feature these Oregon Eco Pack needles. Um, they're really great because they store your needles really well. You slide this film down open up your needle packs. And then if you switch your needles out quite a bit, like I do from embroidery to quilting to universals, etc., you can take your needle that hasn't given you all of its life yet and move it a couple of notches over to the right or left. And then you know when you go back to switch out your needle that that is the one that you haven't gotten all the life out of yet. So I really love this packaging for that reason alone. Not to mention I can hang it on my little pegboards and it's really nice to keep my needles nice and tidy. So grab assortment packs that have a couple of different sizes in them. So grab a quilting assortment pack, grab a universal assortment pack, grab a jersey assortment pack. That way, no matter what thread weight you're using, you have a couple of different needle sizes to choose from. You can do your little thread and needle test to see what's going to work for your project. And you'll be that much better off when you start off your project. So that is my advice. Okay. Okay. Some people are still asking about the embroidery design. The embroidery design that we featured on the Lucky Mini Quilt is from OESD. It is not from Sulky. I cannot go and feature somebody else's design and give it to you for free, unfortunately. It's relatively inexpensive. The pattern for the mini quilt is what is the freebie. So you are welcome to use a design that you have in your stash. Like I said, you could also do some hand embroidery or you could do decorative stitching in the center of that block, or you could just use another print fabric. Maybe you wanna fussy cut a really cute motif out of your fabric print and feature that in the center. And then you could do some outline quilting, um, some shadow quilting, some, you know, even just decorative meandering free motion stitches like this would still look really pretty if you fussy cut a fabric for that center panel. So there are a lot of options for what you want to sort of make your focal point. Oh, and Jennifer is saying you can buy in the hoop quilting designs. Yes, you can make other mini quilts and I mean, you can buy in the hoop anythings, right? So there are so many different options. Lots of people saying they have they have capabilities to also quilt in the hoop. So that's just wonderful. 
yeah, now that we're we're freshly on the heels of Valentine's Day, it's just it's time to start thinking about the next holiday, right? When you're a crafter or a creative person, a sewist, a quilter, we're always on to the next holiday, right? <laughs> Okay. Oh, Gayla says, I'm lucky. I have the design. <laughs> there you go. That's perfect. Helen is saying, I am looking forward to trying 12 weight as a blanket stitch on my applique. That is a great idea. It gives you a really nice pronounced stitch. So it's great for decorative applications. Looks really, really nice on and layered appliques as well. Okay. Again, if you are commenting, liking, sharing the post, asking your questions, you are eligible for today's uh, giveaway, which is a six pack of Sulky Poly Sparkle Thread. It is called the Luck of the Irish Six Pack. It retails for $24.99 and it contains all the greens and golds um, that you will want to use for St. Patrick's Day decor and um, all kinds of spring projects. I, for one, am looking forward to seeing some green around here in the world again. <laughs> I was just at a place where they spray painted the trees out front green because they had died from the cold. It was not a pretty sight, okay. <laughs> But that's how much we want to see green around here, right? Okay. Joanne says she has never used these metallic threads. She has the blendables. I think you'll really like it. If you have been hesitant to try metallic thread because of the adjustments that you need to make or you're just afraid to take the leap, Sulky Poly Sparkle is a great sort of entry into the world of metallic threads because like I said it's a polyester thread that sews like a polyester thread but with these flecks of metallic running through it so really really pretty and it gives a subtle sparkle it doesn't you don't need to be you know in your face with the sparkle um, and really great for decorative top stitching applique and of course machine embroidery so again, it's a 30 weight thread. Keep that in mind. You need a 9014 needle, slow down your machine and make sure you are consulting with either the design company or the digitizer to make sure that a 30 weight thread is going to work with that design. So choose an open design, choose a line art sort of weight design, um, outline designs quilting designs, red work designs. Um, those would look really pretty with the 30 weight poly sparkle. All right, so some people are starting to ask about my next topic, which is the Bonnie bag. I'm so excited. You know me, I cannot keep a secret. I'm not supposed to talk about this for a little while, but the cat's out of the bag and um, I can't wait to show you. We are partnering with Sally Tomato yet again to bring you a brand new pattern release and a brand new video cast. So for all of you who joined us for Keepsake Key Fobs with Designs by Juju last week, that was a really great webcast. You can still uh, access it now. It's on demand for viewing. Anybody who registers now can still get the Freestanding Lace Heart freebie that Julie gave away for the webcast. So our next one is March 9th. I have linked to it in the description of today's post. It's all the way at the bottom. So you need to scroll down and you will get a link to register for our next video cast. This one is $5.99 to attend. It is full video instruction. I will be the instructor. I will have multiple cameras showing you the sewing, the embroidery, all that good stuff. Uh, the Bonnie bag is a large scale tote bag. Everyone's going to love it. Are you ready to see it? Should I show you? I have two versions. Okay. So version number one 
features those 12 weight cotton petites because we wanted to make sure that everyone, regardless of sewing machine type, regardless of sewing ability, everyone is welcome to attend. So the first one I will show you is the hand embroidery version, and then I will show you the machine embroidery version. So this is the Bonnie bag. It's very large scale, as you can see. It features cork fabric on the handles as well as the base. Really excellent high quality purse hardware, including these feet, these fabulous faux metal zippers. It's got a heavy duty magnet closure. It's got an inner zipper pocket, an inner ah, slip pocket. This is big enough for a tablet to fit in and fully lined, beautifully constructed exterior zipper on the front and on the back. You can choose embroidery here, embroidery on the corners. We've created exclusive embroidery designs to fit these pattern pieces. And I just cannot tell you how in love with this bag I am. This features really high quality canvas fabric as well. Very, very durable and sturdy because this is gonna be your go-to tote. So you really want it to hold up well. It has a fleece interlining in it, has some interfacing to support that interior zipper pocket. There are a lot, a lot of components to this, a lot of techniques that we are going to learn. Um, it's so smartly constructed and I cannot wait to teach it to all of you. So this is the hand embroidery version done with those sulky 12 weight cotton petites. So you can choose that design and you can do it by hand or machine. You can do it on one pocket, on both pockets. You can place it up here, you can resize it. So many customization options. And now let me show you the machine embroidery version. Okay, oh my gosh. I mean, I just, I can't, I love it. So this embroidery is also available if you would like to do this by hand. And if you would like to do this by hand, we will see you at Christmas time with your finished bag. <laughs> just kidding. Some of you can sew much quicker than I. Um, hand embroidery takes me a little bit, I will say. Uh, the machine embroidery designs take a little bit. All right, this is a large scale design. I'm gonna go over how to match this perfectly along the seam line so that your design looks like it wraps around the edges of the bag. And again, you could do this, this uh, design by hand. You could do the other design by machine. You can add the other design as well to this front exterior pocket. We will go over all the customization options and I'm sure you all will figure out other ones you could also do. So the kit for this, while it is not required to attend, I'm sure you're all going to want one because when you see everything that's included um, or that you need for this pattern, I, it's a lot of stuff, right? I mean, the magnets, the zippers, the lining fabric, the interlining, the interfacing, the stabilizer, the threads, it starts to add up. So I highly suggest reserving your kit. Make sure you get the color of cork. We've got two to choose from. This really pretty springy green or the purple I just showed you. And you also want to be sure to choose either hand or machine embroidery because your kit is going to have different materials depending on the type of kit you order and of course the color of kit. So there is the picture of that beautiful green bag with machine embroidery. The video cast is called the Boho Bonnie Bag. These are the machine embroidery kits. You can see the two different colors there. And the hand embroidery kits. So your thread is going to differ and your stabilizer is going to differ between those two kits. 
So you really need to make sure that you're choosing the correct kit that you want, machine or hand, and then coneflower or magnolia for your colors. Okay, lots of people are having questions popping up. So, okay, sorry, I, there's so many that are coming in. I have got to, I've got to scroll all the way down, oh my gosh. Okay, so yes, I'm sorry, I misspoke. Unfortunately, the kits are not quite available yet. Um, so as soon as they are, if you have already registered for the video cast, we will send out an alert as soon as you are able to order that kit and make sure that you get the color that you want. So everyone will be made aware at the same time that the kits are available. Okay. Sherry has never made a bag before. Sherry, you've got to join us. You're absolutely going to love it. Um, is that a zipper pocket? Yes. So there are two exterior zipper pockets, an interior zipper pocket, and an interior slip pocket. That's the one that I said was big enough if you wanted to slip a tablet in there. So lots of pockets in the bag. Um, it's big enough to hold all of your essentials, and you're just going to love it. Claudia is going to do the machine embroidery version. I love it. And thank you, Joanne. The machine embroidery is gorgeous. I know. It's really a labor of love. So I'm just going to tell you all a little bit about the process of coming up with the content for this video cast, as well as working with Sally Tomato to develop the pattern and how the embroidery designs come to light and just how it all comes together. There are a lot, a lot of moving parts and really it begins with inspiration and reaching out to all of you, seeing what kinds of things you're liking um, and asking us to create. And you know, the, this is for you after all. So we wanna make sure that we are creating the content that you want to see the projects that you want to make. So we really, really value that feedback a lot. Um, please don't ever hesitate to reach out to us and let us know. You can send us messages through Facebook. You can send us emails at info at sulky.com. We want to know what you want to know, and we want to create that for you. So um, it really starts there. We start developing pattern ideas, idea boards for whether it's a bag or a quilt or a garment and researching kind of what's out there and what's popular and what's trendy and then kind of tailoring that for sulky products and for um, what can a home sewer execute and be really proud of. So there are so many people involved and um, ideas to share and it's a really collaborative creative process. So then basically I go to our good friends at Sally Tomato and I say, guess what? We want to do another bag. And the reason that I really gravitate towards Sally Tomato is because the way that they structure their patterns, the way that they explain the instruction, the way the bag is constructed is just very smart. For example, for this bag, we are going to turn this entire bag right side out through the interior zipper pocket. So our only seam that we have to sew shut at the end is that pocket seam. The one that gets tucked inside that nobody's ever going to see. It is... I, Every time I make one of these bags and that's part of the instruction, I think to myself, why didn't I think of that? It's brilliant. You don't have to have a seam along the side or a seam along the lower edge that you have to hand sew, have to try to make it look exactly like the rest. And 
Or if you're like me, you always accidentally sew it closed and have to rip it open so that you can turn your bag right side out. So that's one of the reasons that I always gravitate toward Sally Tomato. I love a pattern that anyone can decipher. Anyone of any skill level can feel confident about completing it. And then I like to add some complicated stuff to it. Let's add embroidery. Let's add an embroidery design that needs to be matched perfectly along the seam line. Let's bring a challenge into it so that when we're done creating this bag, we feel like we have really accomplished something, learned something new, that we can tackle any bag pattern that is thrown our way. So in a nutshell, that's kind of how I developed this <laughs> webcast or video cast rather. Um, but a lot of people's hands are in it, a lot of moving parts, like I said, and I think that you all are really going to enjoy it. So I will get off my video cast, uh, soapbox for now, and I hope you all enjoy, uh, join us on March 9th at 2 p.m. Um, I will be ready for you. I, can you tell? I'm so enthusiastic about it. I just cannot wait to really share this bag with the world. <laughs> All right. So be sure to uh, go sign up for the video cast. Like I said, the, um, the link to register is uh, in the description of today's post. And yes, Elaine agrees with me. Having made many Sally Tomato bags, I can honestly say the instructions are really easy to follow. Love it. And yes, you can make them on a domestic machine. Um, you do not have to have a multi-needle embroidery machine. None of that. I will say the smaller design you can do in a smaller hoop, about a five by seven. If you resize it slightly, you can do it on a four by four hoop. The uh, larger design that wraps around the side seam, you do need a rather large hoop for that. And if you register for the video cast, which is $5.99 to attend, you get all these embroidery designs for free. You get the machine embroidery collection and you get the hand embroidery printables so that you can create whichever version of the bag you want. And that is a $24.98 value. So if you love those designs, register for the video cast and you will get them for free. All right. Okay. Not to mention the great instruction and 90 minutes of content and four fantastic door prizes to win. So there are lots of different reasons for joining us on March 9th. But anyways, I hope you all enjoyed today. I cannot wait to see your uh, your lucky mini quilts. So after you make your lucky mini quilts, uh, please post your projects to social media and tag us and add the hashtag so better with sulky. And we will be able to see your post and share it as well. We love seeing everything that you create. When we did our new year's Eve video cast event with Sally tomato, so many of you sent us photos of your finished bags, and it's been so, so fun to see everyone's interpretation of that base bag pattern. So I would really love to see how you make this one your own and how you use it to celebrate for St. Patrick's Day. So again, um, going off of the lucky vibe uh, for all of you commenting, liking, and sharing today, you're eligible to win our Luck of the Irish Poly Sparkle six pack. So keep those likes, shares, comments coming. And I will be picking a winner in about 24 hours and reaching out to you via Facebook to tell you that you've won. All right. Again, I hope you all are enjoying your snow, your snowing machines, um, and your, you know, letting it sew. I could go on and on with the sewing and snowing puns, really, but I will save you. Um, enjoy yourselves. Stay warm. Stay, stay safe out there, and I'll see you next week.